right, Spruce, welcome to the show. Before we start, we got to introduce our co-host, Amber Walsh. Hi, Amber. Hello, everyone. Hey, Amber. Hi. So, nice context for why Amber is here, and also like how I even know you guys, is you played Music You're Missing's first ever thing that wasn't the podcast. Um, and I'm not going to call it a festival because it was very <laughs> podunked. Um, you played a <laughs> festival esque. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll give you that. Uh, Friends of Friends Festival in Amber Walsh's backyard in Brighton. Um, it was a wonderful time for me, at least. How was that experience for you guys? We loved it. Yeah, honestly, yeah. it was a great experience. Um, so a funny story about Friends of Friends Festival. We played last, I think, right? There were two yeah, other... You guys were or, the freaking headliners, man. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, we wanted to indulge in all the great things you had. And maybe we got a little stone before we were going to play. <laughs> a couple um, of those weed seltzers. Yep. Yeah, yeah yep. A effect. couple of can of seltzers. <laughs> and then um, your sister, Emerald, mm -hmm. started the festival... With a breathing exercise yeah, routine. That was great. So, you know, I had, I was sitting down before the breathing <laughs> exercise routine being like, I'm cool. The world's not ending. You know, I'm going to live. <laughs> and then um, we did a, a breathing exercise where we kind of put our hands up like this and all rotated right. mm. simultaneously and breathe <laughs> through. And then Jack and I on the first rotation caught eye contact immediately so we went back and then on the second turn jack's face was like beat red and like he was trying not to laugh it, just because we were like you know this is kind of funny like what's going on but it actually helped me like calm down and be like all right nice we're gonna we were play music. completely synced up and yeah we're, yeah i was dying yeah I was, it was very quiet yeah. i was trying not to laugh I but it was a great that. time it, yeah it turned out it turned out to help me calm down and be like all right we're gonna play a great show and it's cool <laughs> she's gonna be so flattered when she hears yeah honestly that. i needed <laughs> it i needed it i really needed it yeah. emerald really is like a shaman so she mm. really yeah. expect that you said that <laughs> okay um, it's funny that you mentioned that though because like coming into this i was like i've got to tell you a little behind the scenes fact and right. it was that i was so fucking high for that <laughs> i wasn't so oh, we had a, a sponsor shout out cantrip they literally mm. gave us Oh, I think 200 cans yeah. of their THC seltzer, which is so scrumptious. Um, <laughs> and it was really my first introduction to THC seltzer. And I was just like slugging them. Yeah. And I remember like it, it got to the point. Emerald just like, can you get, can you like say something on the microphone? And I was like, no. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, I'm like technically like supposed to be working here. Like I'm not yeah. here for fun. I was way too high. <laughs> yeah. It yeah. happens. Hey, it does happen. But <laughs> good but thing for breathing exercises and, you know, yeah. friends. And a thousand dollars was raised for charity. Plus yeah. a thousand awesome. plus. Excellent. So it was also like a beautiful day too. Like yeah. so oh fall Sunday, you know, outside, cool people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Nick built that beautiful stage at the last second. That was well, nice. you know, it was a little stage, but it was, it really <laughs> did the trick. Yeah, it was um, really cute. Like a wood panel, what do you call that? Um yeah, wood platform. Wood, like the things that yeah. they throw out at home. But I also pallets. remember pallets. Pallets. Yeah, pallets. There we go. I remember by the time I had to go up and say something, I think I was like kind of singing it at that point. <laughs> I was just like, woo. <laughs> It was, a, day. it was a very like hippy dippy day for sure. Oh yeah, um, and that's kind of what music you're missing is all about. Um, <laughs> friends of friends that actually introduced me to Spruce. Um, and before like we get into Spruce, I want to talk about where you were before because I know you guys were both in different projects before Spruce. So how did Spruce come to be? So basically, Tim and I have a mutual friend, and Tim was in a band with that mutual friend before joining Spruce. Um, and then I would, me and <laughs> Tim's mutual friend were in another band, um, that we all decided to part ways. Um, and I was like, well, we'd been working on something for like six months to a year. And I had a bunch of songs that I had written and really wanted to get out there. And, uh, me and this other mutual friend, uh, <laughs> dancing around things out here. <laughs> no names. But, uh, yeah, no names today. But, uh, ended up starting Spruce with me, Tim, and, and this other friend, uh, who has since departed. Um, from the band, still very much here, but, um, <laughs> but no, just got it going after that and, uh, kind of had already been working on songs and, and stuff as a band for like six months and then just launched it into Spruce from this previous project. Um, and then, uh, Tim and I just recently in the past like six months found a new drummer that kind of have built the core around it. And that's, that's what we've been working with for the past six months. And hopefully for a, a very long time after yeah. this. Yeah, I mean, um, when Jack and our friend approached me about Spruce, I had they asked me to maybe play bass in the band. I never played bass, so it was kind of like, all right, I'm going to learn to do something different <laughs> and try not to, like, ruin the band and the sound. And by... he's great at it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I, still I still think I'm a fake bassist, you know? <laughs> like, fake it till you make it kind of like guy. You had no formal training? No, yeah, I mean, no. I just kind of, like, watch some YouTube videos and, like, 
just try and not sound really bad with everyone else. You know, as long as That's I like, mix in. Dude. Yeah, well, thank you. Um, so it was cool. It was cool to learn something new, and our friend and Jack were just like really welcoming, and it was a good vibe to join Spruce. So I was excited when they asked me. Yeah. So what was like the what was the vision for Spruce? Like, what did we originally want to create when we decided to to form Spruce? To be honest, I, my uh, my thing is I always just want to play live. I, yeah. I want to play as much as we can and kind of just have it out to people that we're playing. People hear it. They like it. Oh, you can also get it online. You know, you can listen to this all the time. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I guess the main idea was just to keep playing live and, and just kind of become a thing in Boston. Um, and we're, we're kind of on that road still and, uh, and having fun with it. And just not really a jam band, but, you know, there are moments where things carry on for a while in one song and stuff and just having fun with it and letting, letting the musicians be the musicians that are in it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I totally felt the jam band vibes from you guys at Friends <laughs> yeah. of Friends. Like I remember just looking up at you guys playing and feeling really blissed out. Nice. <laughs> um, where did the name Spruce come from? I've had this question asked, and honestly, I was invited to the band post Spruce, uh, so I was like, uh, I don't really know. I just know that we're <laughs> not tree affiliated. So like people oh. think the tree, <laughs> we're not tree the affiliated. The trees don't yeah. sponsor you. Yes, yeah. the trees do not sponsor us. I guess Jack would know better. <laughs> so we were looking for a name and we had 20 to 40 of them on a piece of paper and every single one that we looked at was we were like, that's terrible. That's bad. Yeah, and it's one of those things that like if you've never joined a band or started a band, you don't really know that naming it is actually the hardest part. You yeah, read all the music. <laughs> but uh, we came up with Spruce and we are like, I don't think anybody could hate that for any objective reason. But then we also said... <laughs> unless they hated the tree. Unless they yeah. Really yeah, tree. you really hate Christmas yeah. trees. Yeah, true. Um, but then we also made a decision early on. We were like, we're going to call ourselves spruce. Never putting a tree on anything. I like that. So we're sticking to it so far. <laughs> so far, no yeah. tree affiliations. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I want to bring it back to what you said about like your goals for the band. Because I think that's actually super cool and unique and realistic um, to kind of get booming in Boston and the fact that you prioritize live music is something that I don't see a lot of artists prioritizing <laughs> these days yeah. it's more so like how can I get the next TikTok dance um yeah. so that's that's really sick um it actually makes me wonder though when you guys played friends of friends I feel like you weren't necessarily playing out all that much what's your what's your like gig history <sighs> yes from friends of friends from Th that was which probably was like, like a year ago yeah that was probably like September change. November this As a group, that was probably like our third or fourth show. Damn, no way. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And we kind of like, we had a core of uh, rhythm guitars, lead guitars, and Tim playing bass, and then kind of had like a floating drummer situation. Mm. So like we had, a, we had all the songs written, had everything else done, but then it would come like, oh, we got a show. Oh, shit. We got to find a drummer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> could we curse on here? I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. All right. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. Shit is Good cool. Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Good <laughs> Lord, please. Right. Shit is cool. All right. But uh, from then, I think that was like our third ever show. And then we've just kind of been rolling from there. Damn. Yeah. Yeah, I think um, the Boston, Boston music scene is interesting. Like, you know, booking your own shows and finding, I think finding places to play is the hardest thing. There aren't as many places where you can just like, you know, set up a show or pull up and play or play your own music. That's not like you're not a cover band. Yeah, you know, a lot true. of places you're just going to see a lot of cover bands, which is cool, you know. Um, but for us, you know, setting up shows, connecting with other bands that also play original music and want to play shows with us is something that's just cool. And just, it's part of the experience for us. You know what I mean? Like we love playing live. We love playing our songs and it's like the hard work we do practicing is like coming to realization when we play a great show and people are like, wow, that was awesome. We're like, mm -hmm. thanks. You know, we, we worked really hard on that and yeah. that's what we, we love to do. So yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned, um, booking your own shows. I kind of want to know more about where you guys are on like the business side of things. Um, do you have a manager? No, we no do manager, not. no manager. You're we looking self -manage. at right Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We split duty, self managing. Yeah, and maybe not always the best. You know, For sometimes sure. you know some e email errors have occurred. You know, we it's have a good system yeah. where Tim is like, "We got an email. You're gonna answer it." And I'm like, "Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You want to take this one? Like, ah, yeah, all right, all right. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. No, it's definitely hard to do like on your own, but yeah. it's also not necessary for everyone because that's a financial expense that you gotta mm -hmm. keep into consideration. Yep. So yep. keep yeah, keep doing that. Yep. Um, is this this is not a full time gig, correct? No, we both came from work. Yeah, unfortunately, <laughs> um, it's not. <laughs> what are, what's, yeah. Hey, this isn't my full time gig either. What's what's <laughs> occupying our nine to five? 
uh, construction for both of us, oddly enough. Just yeah. happenstance. I'm yeah. an assistant project manager in construction. And Damn. I work for uh, like a real estate developer. So what's like the juxtaposition between doing that? Because, I, I mean, I feel the same way. Like working a corporate job, also construction, I feel like, is a lot less creative than maybe being a musician. Um, yep. How do you kind of like work-life balance separate the two? Um, I, I guess I feel like I live two lives sometimes. I live like the real estate development life. And then at night, I'm kind of like Batman. I'm like, all right, I'm going to be a <laughs> rock star now. I'm going to put on my rock star mask at times, you know. Um, yeah, I guess it's hard. You know, I wish this could be a full-time thing. I think that's maybe a goal of ours to like, you know, if it turned our way, we could do it full-time. That would be sweet. Definitely. I could walk into my boss's office and be like, hey, man, sorry, but, like, I'm going to do this yeah. instead, and it's going to be cool. <laughs> um, but, you know, I think, you know, getting to 5 o'clock and then transitioning is something I look forward to, so it kind of, like, helps get through the day. You're like, all right, I've got to practice or a show later. You're like, nice, I'll get through work and do my job sure. and then carry on as a part-time rock star, per se. That's really Love cool that. to hear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm similar in the sense of, like, you got practice from 7 to 10. Like, yeah, it is late, but, like, that's what you want to do. Yeah. And, like, it's a thing that you love to do. And also, I have, like, my bosses are funnily supportive of the music, mm -hmm. which is great because they're, like, I think they know, if, like, <laughs> oh, if it ever took off, like, uh. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, they'd yeah. understand. They'd, like, we get it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah of yeah. course. That's, I mean, that's really true. And, like, same with me and a lot of other artists that I've, I've talked to. Finding, like, the support in your corporate life is huge because like when before I was doing what I was doing now I have so much flexibility I was not able to do anything in music mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. your dream is dead if you don't have the <laughs> flexibility because you got to pay the bills and yeah. like being oh, an yeah. independent artist even if you're bumping on like Spotify is still not really paying the bills mm. yeah pennies on the dollar Ooh. Spotify point zero zero pennies on the dollar you ever got yeah. a check for Spotify yeah. yet have we I tried to look at our distro kid today <laughs> and I didn't have the password on my computer and I was like it's probably oh, like geez. 20 bucks. <laughs> but like, yeah, we could get like a couple Happy Meals maybe with Yeah. Them, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, That's a start. That is a start. Um, yeah. Yeah, it would be kind of sweet, yeah. Going back to playing live, though, I mean, that is kind of the more appeal of playing live of like, oh, you kind of can make a little bit of money at least Dude, doing yeah. something more so because the streams are very tough. I yeah. Mean, probably as you guys know, too. I was just curious, let's say, like, going with the dream, if you do take off or if it does get to go full-time, is there a venue, whether it's in Boston or anywhere, that you've dreamed of playing at? And mm. is there an artist who you're like, oh, I'd love if they joined in for this song or I'd love to collaborate with them? That's you a go great first. question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've, just being in Boston for five or so years now, I've always loved the Sinclair. Mm, yeah. Um, it's not like a huge room, but it's big enough where you're like, this is cool. I feel like, you know, I'm like legit kind of oh. thing. Um, so I would love to play the Sinclair. An artist? Um, that's a, that's a tougher question. I don't know if I can think of an artist off the top of my head that I'd love to join us. We're welcoming to, you know, a lot of different types of music. I don't know, Jack, do you, anyone you'd be like, wow, this would be a super sick Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> all right, all right. Yeah, you got the idea then, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a guitar player um, and just kind of, like, love certain guitar guys. But, like, I guess, and currently where we're at right now, like, in my head would be, like, if we could play the Paradise Rock Club mm -hmm. and then John Frusciante and Flea wanted to stop by, that'd be sick. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> Which, Sounds yeah. awesome. I knew band that. doesn't yeah. make much sense, yeah. but, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they're in town. Yeah. Just yeah. a quick little stop by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, what venues have you played in Boston? I know you did the Cantab. Mm -hmm. um, great venue. Uh, yeah. Have you played, like, Brighton Music Hall? Played the Jungle in Somerville. Cantab Lounge, of course. Um, we've done a bunch of open mics at the Bebop. We've never actually played oh. our, our yep. own show there, but yep. Yep. that's a fun little spot. The Burn. Um, the Burn. The burn. Yeah. The bar the Bebop. The Everyone loves the Burn, right? Burn yeah. back room. Yep. Good time back there. Um, mi um, what's the one in Jamaica Plain? Uh, Midway. Midway, Midway Cafe. Midway. Yes. Yep, yep. Um, we know that all too well. Karaoke <laughs> Thursday nights. Really? You guys have done karaoke there Thursday nights? Oh, yeah. Um, karaoke. Yeah. Karaoke. <laughs> that's all right. Ah, Important okay. distinction. That's an <laughs> no, my apologies. What, uh, what's your guys' song of choice, if you don't mind me asking a question? Mine is Believe by Cher. Oh, my nice. God. Yeah. What a song. Or Valerie, nice. Amy Winehouse. Okay. Is, yeah. Two great songs. What about yours? Maybe? I'm going to hit it with I'm Yours by Jason Mraz. Oh, wow. God. I think yeah. we've sang that together, maybe. Bob. 
Oh, uh, yeah, actually, Hampton saying, Beach. Lucky I'm in Oh, no, yeah, you're right. right. Wow. I learned I'm drops. yours when I was, like, 15. <laughs> Dude, it's and embarrassingly like, played it for a high school girlfriend, and I will never recover. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 29 years old. No, but, no, listen, listen, let me tell you, that is a party trick, and I didn't realize until recently because, I, I don't know, I like, karaoke has been around forever, but mm-hmm. I feel like recently... I've been like, I'm not fucking around. If I'm doing karaoke, like the whole crowd's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And lately exactly. I've been hitting it with the I'm yours. And actually, most recently, I was at my, my friend's wedding and they had a piano person doing like piano karaoke. Nice. I did I'm yours. I've never felt more like a superstar in my life. Yeah, <laughs> real. Mix it into a set next time. Yeah. I don't know. All right. All right. That's not a bad idea. And yeah. I'm not saying it's, I, I don't love the song. I don't. <laughs> it's the people that love it. That's true. You, karaoke is about the people. It is. Definitely. Absolutely. It is. And kind of like gigging. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say the hardest I've ever went at karaoke was this past summer in Hampton Beach, New Hampshire. Mm. I did a standing back bend as part of my routine. And this woman thought wow. that I was collapsing. So she tried to come over and like <laughs> pick me back up. I was like, this was a stunt. Like, this was part of my gig. You're a blowing stunt. my show right now. Yeah. <laughs> it was, was this right, though. during Believe I Share? Like, what I were you singing? It was either that or Valerie. It had it, to be one um, of those. I think it's probably Valerie. Valerie, Valerie yeah. might yeah. make a little more sense. Yeah. <laughs> Did you know um, Believe I Share is the first song to ever use auto tune? Like, oh, Cher really? was the first person to ever use auto tune on Believe, I think. I didn't know. Oh Don't God. quote me on that, but I'm like 99% sure. <laughs> I'm gonna oh, cut that as cool. a clip, yeah. post it on TikTok, <laughs> and see what people say. And then in the <laughs> comment, everyone's like, "That right. kid's an idiot. He's no idea." <laughs> uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, well, all right. Bring it back to gigging and playing out. Um, mm. You kind of you got like the spruces loose mm, gigs yeah. coming up. Yep. Um, yep. I I want to highlight because, like I said, I feel like when I first tuned into you, it didn't seem as if you were gigging all that much. But now you got a new EP. You're gigging. Mm-hmm. Um, you're clearly booking it yourself. So what's uh, what's lighting this fire under us? Really, to be honest, is finding that that drummer um, whose name is Fernando. You can shout see, out to Fern Daddy. See him up there, yep, up, our on boy. The left there he is. Um, but no, just just finding the the right guy, um, and it could have been anybody, um, but he came in and just it gelled, and we had a show. Uh, I think maybe like eight days after we met him, and then we played with him twice, and then played a show, and we were like, "Draw by fire, let's go." And then it really worked out. And then uh, now that we have this kind of core that really we're ready to go at any moment, yeah. now we're like just reaching out, finding shows, yeah. taking stuff, and just more excited about it too because you just have that core that's already ready to go. Yeah, before when, when our other friend was in the band, it was you know two guitarists and a bassist. You need, you need a drummer, and we were right. kind of floating drummer. So now that we, like Jack said, we have this core, we're like, all right, we'll play whenever, you know, anyone that will take us will do it. And... Um, Fernando has been a great ad in the sense that, like, he contributes mm-hmm. to like structures of songs and things that Jack and I would never think of as non-drummers. You know, his his perspective for like, wow, Fernando, that's so true, dude. We should do it that way. <laughs> like, oh my god, I would have never thought of this. So it's You're like, a smart guy, Fernando. Yeah, <laughs> you are the man, Fernando. So like, you know, it it's helped Jack and I, I guess, progress as musicians and songwriters, thinking about things from a percussion sense. We're like, all right, yeah, we should like change change things up at this moment and do this differently and you know just having him with us you know we are a full band now we're ready to play and so now yeah. that we're ready to play why not why not keep playing mm-hmm. dude hell yeah that's awesome yeah. and I, it, it definitely shows too like i I've, I've been keeping an eye out on you guys um and like i said i can tell that i don't know it seemed like a, a positive change for sure yeah um no, yeah definitely which leads me to the newest ep madison hotel Amber was, before we even get into the music, Amber was enthralled by the cover art. Yeah. It reminded me of Grand Budapest Hotel. Ooh. <laughs> I wanted her to. <laughs> I me like too, that. a little bit. Yeah, Wes Anderson. So I made a collage out Ooh. of um, New York Times magazines. Mm. And that's all the things in the, <laughs> <laughs> in the uh, EP art. Language. And then uh, it was actually, the background was kind of like a weird pink and green color. Mm. And then we put like the collage onto Jack's. Microsoft Paint, Microsoft Paint 3D, 3D. Okay, yeah. no, you got which once you version. save it, you can't modify it. Oh, wild, <laughs> yeah. Fun fact. <laughs> um, a anyway, heart attacks in there. So, so we classic. changed the color of the background and like the clouds and things, and yeah, it turned out pretty cool. Yeah. I spent a whole Saturday, slightly stoned, cutting out <laughs> New York Times magazines <laughs> and I making love collage. A collage. Yeah, yep. It was yep. both of our ideas to do the collage, and I was like, all right, we'll we'll come together, we'll both make collages, and then we'll see which one is better. And Tim sent me a photo of his, and I was like, I didn't you start. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Something I love about a project is when it's not named after one of, like, the tracks on the on the project. Mm-hmm. Usually there's, like, a reason for that. Mm-hmm. 
how did we come up with the name Madison Hotel? So this is another thing, kind of going back to naming stuff actually being the hardest part about it. Because <laughs> sometimes you have a song written, you're like, this is great. And you're like, what do I call it? You're like, and I have no idea. But I live uh, or have lived on uh, Madison Street and kind of sitting in a back room in there writing songs, doing whatever. And I was like, you know what? Madison Hotel would be a pretty good name. I'm like, why not? And like, eh. He's in and out, everybody's in and out, kind of hanging out, writing music, doing whatever. And I was like, that's a solid name. I just kind of ran with it. Madison Hotel. Love it. I Hell think yeah. it came down, it was Madison Hotel or was it Midnight Blue? What was the other one? Something like Midnight Blue. Something blue, yeah. Something like kind of like erotic blue or something <laughs> we were going to go with. Very Lana Del Rey of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I feel like John Mayer came out, his last album was something blue, right? It was like... I was worried that we, we were going to go like the Miles Davis route of like Shades of Blue. Oh, yeah. And I was like, if we're mm. calling something Midnight Blue, like we got to. Or even competing with Taylor Swift's Midnights. Oh. oh. We don't want to compete with Definitely Taylor. Definitely not. <laughs> In yeah. today's day and time, we do not want to compete <laughs> with her. Not the person we want to go up against. But yeah, so I like Madison Hotel. It, yeah. it, it inspired the idea for the album art. It was a cool idea because Jack, you know, lives in that street. It meant something to all of us. So, yeah. That's cool. for sure. Yeah. yeah, the first track I heard from that was Away Game. Um, mm. Super impressive. Thanks. Really, really good stuff. It seems like there was kind of like an upgrade in production since the, the first release. Is, am I correct in saying that? It's funny that you say that. Yeah. <laughs> Away Game is almost in a, not a downgrade in production, but... Oh, wow. Um, Away Game wasn't going to originally be on the EP. Mm -hmm. um, right. And so then Jack and I were together and we were like, let's just make like a demo of something. And I was like, Jack, what do you have? He's like, oh, I got this song called Away Game. So we spent a couple hours making the demo and then like, you know, I kind of like mix it around and like added some stuff and then we presented it to the rest of the group at the time. They're like, wow, this is like pretty cool. Let's, this should, this should get on there. We we're like, all right, nice, let's do it. So we like did a lot of the work ourselves in kind of like a very DIY, not knowing how to produce music. Let's just like make something that sounds cool format. I think it was just like in three hours and we had yeah. like the vocals and the guitar and everything set and we were like, this is kind of good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Wait, no, so did, did you not, self-produce like settle in and we alone. worked with another guy but it was everything that we've had on spotify is kind of done in a basement or a garage yeah, yeah, type deal yeah. um and I, the same person helped us make you know finish away game right like he, yeah, you know, he, he got us to the finish line um but yeah we just this it just started as a demo we were like this sounds cool let's just record it and see what happens and then like we just put it together last minute and it ended up making it on the ep and we're like nice good for us yeah hell yeah yeah um, the EPS two tracks, Away Game, All I Need. I'm sure you're sitting on like a bunch more. So why did we know these were the, the next two to release? Um, I think with All I Need, we were definitely kind of pumped on that one. Like I, I kind of put that one together and then like brought it to the guys and I was like, yeah, look at this. <laughs> like, come on. I'm, I was real excited on that one. So we knew that was going to go, um, definitely. And then really with Away Game, it, it just so happened that one night. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> There's the moment. That, how, it that, happens. The that moment. might have been Santa Claus. <laughs> 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 Away Game just kind of came together. And it's kind of one of those things that like you make something and like I feel like you make music and then you think about it and you're like, I like this. Is anybody else going to like this? And then you listen to it a hundred times and you go like, yeah, I think somebody might. And it, it sounded like kind of too good to keep it off kind of deal. So we were like, all right, let's do it. And just put it out. And then all I need was a whole different animal of recording it. Um, we recorded that one as like a full band. So oh, cool. room mics and all different stuff. And, and that was a 10-hour Saturday. Of yeah, we did like 50-something <laughs> takes. So many. With no lyrics, just, just the music. Yeah. Um, just over and over and over again. And I think all I need was like one of the first songs when you guys invited me to join, we were like, you were like, hey, I got this new thing. Let's try this. And I was like, oh. Nice. Okay. <laughs> like, well, this is cool. Like, I'm in. Let me be in your band. <laughs> and we'll make this song together. So, yeah, it was yeah. cool. It was fun doing it, too. It was fun doing all those recordings and then, like, also doing that while not singing. Yeah. It's hilarious because you're n used to, like, all right, I'm playing, I'm singing, <laughs> everything's in order, and then you go, like, you cannot make a noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and it's like... Ooh, everything changes, but we got there and we're, we're happy with what we got out yeah. there. Speaking of lyrics, I, for Away Game and Slash before this episode, I was like Googling to see if you guys had lyrics online. And it doesn't appear that you do yet. Ooh. So I Ooh. wonder 
if you might treat us to putting the lyrics online and maybe including a little bit of lore behind the songs. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, I think we could do that. that. That's probably an unintentional, that's probably like a result of us self-managing. We're like, how do you, (laughs) how do you do that? (laughs) We're not really hiding. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's probably an unintentional thing, but we can, we can, yeah, I just love reading the lyrics. Yeah, that that is a cool feature. Yeah. When I have an artist on the show, I get like really fucking hippy dippy with it because I really want to listen to like the music and I want to talk about it. Um, And the first thing I do is I'll go on Genius and I'll look up the song and I notice you guys didn't have it. And I'm like, yeah, it's just indicative of you, like you said, being like self-managed. So I'm kind of curious though. I want to, talk more about like the business stuff uh, okay because this is the stuff sure. that fascinates sure. me. sure what was your like rollout strategy and it's like okay if you didn't have one but like what was your rollout strategy for madison hotel for madison hotel it was shortly after uh losing a band member yeah it was in the midst um, of like a potential band breakup so we yeah. had maybe had a had an idea and then we had to reevaluate Ooh. our plan a little bit it was it was honestly it was a moment where Things kind of think the way things played out. Um, I immediately was like, I don't even want to do this anymore. And I was like, I'm done. I'm upset. And it, it was what it was. 48 hours later, I called Tim. I was like, Can we please be in a band still? <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, I was dumb. <laughs> yeah, like, let's keep it going. Um, and we had away game and, and all I need together. And we were like, All right. It was originally supposed to be three. Um, we, we kept off the third one. That was a. a the other persons that ended up leaving um, and put those two out. And at that current moment, it was like, we worked so hard to get these songs done. We're going to put them out, promote them on our Instagram and everything. But then we were also just two guys. Yeah. So we were like, all right, what are we going to do here? And the plan was, was to practice as much as we can, keep everything as tight as we can, keep playing, keep playing all the songs and everything. And then when we find someone else that wants to be in the band, like a drummer, we have to convince them that we're good enough that they need, that they want to stay. And, we succeeded. So yeah. it worked out. But a, yeah. a lot of hours of me and Tim alone in a... Have you ever been to the Record Co? In Dorchester? Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, this, mass, one's, uh, this one's on like the Mass oh, Ave. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> they have small rooms that are probably like six feet wide by like eight foot that way. Yeah. And they're tiny. And it would just be me and Tim just like hammering out songs for two hours two, three times a week. Yeah. For like really four sweaty. or five months. Yeah. And drums were, I have a foot tambourine that I like to use. Oh, and wait. so that was our percussion section was my foot tambourine. <laughs> Did you see his left calf? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, so jacked. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when we released the music, when we, when we finally got to like, let's put it out, let's do it. You know, um, I guess our plan was, I don't know if we really had a plan. We were like, let's just get, uh, getting it out was the plan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, Staying together and become, you know, creating a band again was like the next step. And we persevered kind of to get to that point. And now we're there playing shows. And now that we have made this new band, per se, you know, maybe we're going to record new music soon, I think is maybe on the horizon. Uh, Yeah, that might, that's, we got this kind of the holiday tour, the Spruce is Loose tour going on in Boston right now. And then the plan is, is kind of after that, like record a couple singles and, and produce them that way and get them out. Yeah. Um, just to kind of keep it hot and keep things going. Yeah, dude. That's honestly, that is the best rollout strategy is to keep it hot. And like, yep. especially with the live shows, those are going to be so many new ears you're getting your music in. Mm-hmm. Capitalize off that for sure. Mm-hmm, um, let's talk about the shows. What uh, what do you got lined up for them? So we got, we just played Cantab Lounge on Tuesday, uh, the upstairs. We How was the Tuesday night crowd? I Like, was it lit? It was pretty good. Yeah. yeah. No well, people yeah. that I thought they were going to be there on a Tuesday night, yeah. you know? Indicative of you guys being good, first of all. Oh, I appreciate um, it. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know, but yeah. I, <laughs> no, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it was good. That was good. And then uh, uh, December 29th, Cantab Lounge, uh, 7 and 9 will be going on at 9. And then we're playing New Year's Eve at the Jungle in Somerville. That's awesome. Um, Are you playing until yeah. the ball drops? We're unsure of the yeah. time. Okay. Yeah. That would be That's cool. It's really exciting. Though. <laughs> no, it's fun. We, we played there like a month ago. And uh, the booker was working the door, and like, it was a, it was funny because he was like, oh, like never really met us before, and like, ah, oh, whatever. And then we played, had like, fifty or sixty people come through. Yeah. Kind of really packed out the jungle. Had a great time. And then I was bringing out my guitar and my amp, and he was like, New Year's Eve. And I was like, Yeah, all right, let's do it. So, and then we kind of told him we had a show two days before, and typically they don't like to do that. And he was yeah. like. We want you guys. Like, come on in. Dude, good for so them. That's awesome. good. Well, good for you guys, first yeah, of all. But thanks. also, shout out to them for not being douchebags. And letting oh, exactly. Play. Sure. Also, if we do play to the ball drop, 
Jack and I might have to kiss, right? That's <laughs> sorry, sorry, at Kirsten, Jack's girlfriend, but like, uh, if we're playing and the ball's dropping, you got to kiss someone, dude. Yeah. Right? You got it, bro. <laughs> okay. That like, do you feel pressure? Like, I feel like you're welcoming people into the new year. The first thing they're gonna remember is is Spruce. Yeah, like that band slapped and they kissed. Like that's <laughs> those are two. <laughs> holy, holy shit, that band rocks. Tim, yeah, so Tim is going reasons. rogue. I don't know. Honestly, I think you guys got to kiss. You got to kiss. We're gonna kiss. <laughs> He's not. He might not like it, but we'll kiss. We'll even if you're set. Ends at like nine. You guys get you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. was that about? Yeah. <laughs> they kissed three hours early. That's weird. Love uh, wins. That's right. That's right. So what? Uh, what is next after this? I, I, you alluded to creating new stuff. Um, I imagine you're writing. What's What's been inspiring us lately? <sighs> inspiring. I, I it's like, funny because yeah. yeah, my bad. Uh, but no, I'm. It's funny because like, I. The fun part about being in a band is that you can kind of collaborate, not kind of collaborate, actually collaborate. And what I end up doing a lot is that I'll sit in uh, <laughs> this little back room I have in my apartment until midnight, 1 a.m. And I come up with something and it's starting to make sense. And then I bring it over to these guys and we go to practice. And like a lot of times I just won't like say anything and just start playing something at the front. And they're like, what the hell is that? And I'm like, oh, yeah, come on, guys, let's check it out. <laughs> um, but I mean... Inspiration wise, I, I'm just kind of a jam guy where I just I'll sit down and play for a couple hours and like record stuff here and there on my phone and, and with a microphone here and there and just piece it together from there. It's all kind of an interesting way to figure something out and put it all together. Yeah, I would say about we probably have been working on three or four new songs that, you know, we'll sure. try and record singles maybe of each. I think each song inspiration maybe differs from a lyrical perspective, but. From a musical perspective, I think going back and shouting out our boy Fernando, we've really maybe taken the next step in making music that isn't kind of just like basic structure. We're thinking about things maybe more outside the box and being like, oh, sure. let's try and do something different here and, you know, evolve the song into more of like a, I don't know what the right word for it is, you know, not just a song, but something that's like m more thought out in structure as opposed to just lyrics. Um, more dynamics to it. Yeah, more diverse. More mm -hmm. Yeah, you know that make I mean? more fun and interesting. Um, so I think that inspiration and collaboration we've had when Jack brings, like, you know, the base of something to a table, we're all ready to, like, all right, let's, you know, we could try this, we could do this, and, like, a breakdown or whatever. Um, so I think it's exciting for new Spruce music to be, you know, along the lines of what we put out, but also a little different, a little more diverse, yeah. you know, something interesting for listeners to hear. The dynamic is fun, too, of being like, I come with something, Tim goes like, this is, I think this, and we're like, all right, let's try it out, and then maybe 20 minutes later, we're like, eh, maybe not, and then somebody somebody else throws something in, and just kind of, the, the fun part is, is like, do the best thing for the music, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. it's not, there's no ego really involved mm -hmm. in it, which is yeah. a good part. Yeah. I really want to hear more about you guys' like songwriting process. Like, is there one person who does a lot of the songwriting? And I also want to know if it starts with more of like, I need to write a song about this thing that happened to me, or if it starts with like a line or a word. Like, what? What's it like? That's <laughs> Jack is definitely like the bass songwriter. Okay. Of the band. He'll like you know, I'll turn it over to him. But he he brings like an idea to us, mm -hmm. and then we're like, all right, let's let's shape this thing. Right. But yeah. When you have the idea, Jack, how's that? What it happens? depends. And I think it's different for kind of every song and in every situation. Cause like sometimes I'll be sitting around and like, think of a line and I'm like, Oh, I gotta write that down. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then, but that's almost harder sometimes. Cause then you take that line and then I got to sit down and kind of like make a melody work with the chords or, or mm -hmm. riff or whatever it is. And I'm like, wait a minute, like how do I, it's like reverse engineering. Yeah. Like you already kind of have a thing, but you don't have anything else to go along with it. And then a lot of times more so I'm more guitar focused of like kind of really writing a guitar part and then being like, oh, I can put words to this. Mm -hmm. I, I find that much easier than having the words written out and then going for it. But then I've also more so lately been writing out lyrics and then kind of trying to push myself and being like, all right, I can make this work. I can make it happen. Um, but yeah, it's a hodgepodge of a couple of different things. Mm. Cool. Yeah. And it's cool. Um, you know, I write songs too. I kind of have like a, a personal project going under my own True. name, mm. self plug. I'm putting out an EP on Monday. 
Oh, no. Nice. Whoa. That's awesome. All right, we're going to yes. have to have a little segue in a minute, but go on. <laughs> anyway, it's cool to be around Jack because as a songwriter, I learn a lot from him. You know what I mean? There's, he brings a bass to the table, and then Fernando and I, you know, will build around it and things. So it's interesting, you know, working with different songwriters is so good to learn, you know, what someone else does, and you can take things or, you know, whatever. You can learn from what they do. So for me, it's cool when Jack brings an idea to the table. I'm like, wow, that's cool how you did that. Like, let's talk about this and that. And it, like, is insightful when I think about writing songs and stuff like that. So I love so. playing Tim's music, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my music is more like uh, more like sad indie folk music. <laughs> you know, it doesn't hit, it doesn't slap the spruce sound. And when I first joined the band, our friend and Jack were like, let's, you know, let's enjoy, like, let's do your songs. And I'm like, eh. You know, Spruce has a vibe, right? Like, you know, yeah. we have a vibe and it's a cool vibe. I don't want to like, you know, play a great song like Settle In and then play a song everyone's like, man, this is sad and depressing. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Are these guys good? You know, so, um, you know, it is cool for me to like learn from Jack and like collaborate on songs because it's just like a learning tool mm -hmm. throughout. Yeah. Um, is Settle In kind of like the fan favorite track? Yeah, I would say so. We say that's the one that the kids like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim said that to me on stage on yeah. Tuesday. And I was like, yeah. settle in, right? Like, we just kind of set this on the ground. I was like, settle in? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, it's the one the kids love. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, what? All right. Yeah. 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 I'd say that's the fan favorite. Um, yeah, yeah. Definitely. What kind of response do you guys get? Because I imagine you, when you do play, there are some people who might not have um, been exposed to Spruce before. And it's like their introduction to you. What kind of response do they usually say to you afterwards? We get a lot of... And this is kind of funny because I, I feel like I hear about this a lot with a lot of different musicians and even like comedians, performers, whoever, like they come up and go, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> like they're surprised. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, like it wasn't supposed to be. And you're like, yeah. thanks, I told you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, no, but uh, typically, no, just, I mean, people are going to be like, that was great. Like, thanks. And you're like, all right, great. And I think it's kind of especially independent music. We all know you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. Um, and I, I think people are typically pleasantly surprised with us, which is a, a nice feeling for us, too. That's awesome. I mean, and honestly, like, there there are a lot of artists that aren't necessarily stage ready that do get the opportunity to play out. And that's how you get stage ready, of mm -hmm. course, by practice. Right. But I think part of the reason that some people might be surprised is because, like, when I saw you guys, you were genuinely, like, it didn't seem like that was your third show together ever. It was it was very like polished and like you were a, a long long time band for sure. We hide it well. <laughs> <laughs> Big fake it till you make it, guys. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so Actually, sorry. I didn't really. I, it took me a long time to get out and play out. Like I've been playing guitar for over twenty years now, but I always had this thing in my head of being like, no, I need to be like good enough to go do that. Mm -hmm. And in my head, I never was. I started to go do it, and I was like. What was I thinking? I just I wasted a bunch of time kind yeah. of with that thinking. And, Dude, yeah. that's imposter syndrome, yeah. man. I forget <laughs> who it was. I actually I do know who it was. This is going to be an annoying plug, but I'm going to say it anyways. <laughs> I just plugged myself, so I'm saying. I, I had a conversation with the founder of GovBall, and he's like respectable wow. dude. Yeah, and I awesome. this is before I did anything. I was like interning at Sony at the time, and I was like, oh, I kind of like want to be an artist manager. And he was like, I, I, basically, I said something like, I don't know how to get there. Like, and he's like, go out and manage an artist. Like, you are whatever you are. It doesn't matter what your success is. Like, right. you guys are performers. You're yeah. professional performers. You get paid to perform. It doesn't matter if it's your third time on stage or whatever. <laughs> You're a professional songwriter. Like, you are just like what you are. And honestly, that advice has been, like, one of the biggest things that I've, I've led with my career. So hopefully you will feel the same way. And imposter syndrome's not real. So great. Right. That's actually really cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I like that. All right, great. <laughs> but I'm glad, <laughs> glad the plug worked. Um, all right, so 2024 is on the horizon. You guys are ringing in the new year with a big old smooch. Other than that, <laughs> what what are some goals for Spruce in 2024? Outside of locking lips with Jack. <laughs> <laughs> um, Definitely releasing new music. Yeah, new music. Um, yep. New music is probably our biggest goal. And not necessarily like an album and possibly not even an EP, but I, what we're thinking is more along the lines of releasing multiple singles possibly. Mm -hmm. And especially from like an independent perspective, we had a friend say to us like, shots on goal. You know what I mean? Of just like, keep going out there. Definitely. And yep. there's no reason that like, you don't want to, I mean, not that there's no reason, but you burn 12 songs, get back to the drawing board pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that'll be the that'll be the goal and then keep playing and hopefully by the end of 2024 um, shows in other states 
looking to try mm -hmm. to kind of break into New York. Mm -hmm. Sent a couple emails trying to figure out something for when it gets warmer. Um, but that would be, yeah. Other states and new music are probably at the top of the list. I'm excited for new music because part of doing this is like a creative outlet, right? Like, you know, like you said, construction and real estate development isn't all that creative or cool anyway. So, you know, doing and you know, we don't want to play that many covers because for us writing music and playing our own music is like why we do it. It's a creative outlet. And it's cool. So when you get to a point where you're ready to record new songs, you're like, all right, nice. This is like us manifesting our creative outlet and like putting things out it's a vulnerable thing to put things out but it's like nice we're gonna do this and put it out and it like is a culmination of why i think jack and i probably started playing music mm -hmm. you know outside of playing the instrument but like writing songs it's a cool thing to do so i'm i'm the most excited i love playing shows but recording music and putting out new music is such a fun process and project so i'm excited for that 2024 i definitely really admire your love for music and it's so odd to say because you would think like artists would always kind of lead with that mm -hmm. it's actually n almost rarely the case um <laughs> i asked for your goals and they were both music related so that's really awesome to hear um and i think when you lead with like those intentions that the best stuff comes out so i'm excited to see what's next and you guys have actually been killing it as of late so i'm excited to see you continue to Great. ride that thank wave you. thank yeah, you appreciate that yeah, I was getting a vision of you guys playing at, um, have you ever been to Nectar's in Burlington, Vermont? I feel like you that guys would are no, so, yeah. so, I've never such been. a, like, yeah. great. Is it a people. bar? Um, it's a bar and live music place. A lot of jam bands play there. Uh, I right. guess, I think the Dead used to play there. Um, Nick and Emerald are both, like, they would, they would bring out a big crowd. Burlington, guys. probably. <laughs> yeah. 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 You guys would honestly kill it in Burlington. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Was that one of your guys, like, Spotify wrapped? Towns, locations, Burlington. Mine was actually, I think, Burlington. Mine was Berkeley, <laughs> California. I heard like Berkeley, Burlington, and Cambridge were all like. I got somewhere in California yeah. that was not that far yeah. off. I was like, all right. I right. got Provo, Utah, and it's the Mormon capital of the United States. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, all right. Interesting. <laughs> not sure why. I can't think of any like. I Utah wonder what the Mormons listen yeah. to. Yeah. Listening yeah. to a lot of no Mormon creeds. No <laughs> dancing. <laughs> They're not allowed to dance, I think. What is it? Yeah, you're uh, like, milking? No, not milking. I never oh, uh, <laughs> soaking. Soaking. <laughs> what, what is so what? It's essentially milking? Um, uh, <laughs> wow, interesting. Uh, I don't. We can go into it. We need. Yeah, to. I, don't, I, don't, I can look it up later. I don't need to admit the amount of knowledge I have about that. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to know what's on your. Yeah, right. anyway, yeah. I don't want to look at your search history, Jack. Mm -mm. Uh, all right, I wrap up every interview with this question, kind of similar to what I just asked you, except unrelated to music in your career. What are some goals you have for the near future? Hmm. Interesting. Um, Honestly, I guess a personal goal of mine, and this is cliche, I guess, but living my best life, living consecutive days, and, you know, I guess we only have so much time to do things, and I think about this when I think about working a job and then doing this on the side. You need to take advantage of all the time you have to do something cool, and, you know, is it your legacy or your memory? I don't know, but, like, you know, the new year presents a new opportunity to do new things and cool things. And as opposed to spending it like at your nine to five grinding, doing work that maybe no one appreciates, you know, do something cooler with your life. And I think Spruce does that at our five to nine. Wow. So I'm going to, I'm going to say my goal is to keep rocking the five to nine. Hell yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I think I'm kind of right, right along the same vein. You said it pretty well, but like, I think my, and like we were talking about it before where I, I did this for so long and then kind of just kind of broke out in the past like three years being like, all right, no, we're, we're playing live, we're doing everything and just kind of having confidence in myself, confidence in my ideas and confidence in it is music related, I guess. But then personal life as well, just feel something, go with it, believe in it and go do it. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, at this point in your life, though, it is it is personal because you are making a personal commitment to use your personal time to invest into a different endeavor. Like mm -hmm. you right. definitely be like hitting the gym more. That's what a lot of people say. <laughs> but like you're you're clearly focusing it on like the creative outlet. So I'll accept it. Normally I'm a little I'm I'm normally mean because artists are always like <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's like you push back. You have a goal all the time. Yeah. Oh, uh, almost every time one person I always use this as an example one person said it immediately they're like oh, I really want to buy a Subaru this year and I was like thank you that's awesome that's wow. a very right. specific <laughs> goal right. yeah it's a very specific goal good investment for them I hope they yeah. did yeah, really good yeah long term yep. I thought you were going to say you push people to make it a smart goal 
No, yeah. definitely not. I'm like, have more fun, <laughs> yeah. drink more Viva Tequila Seltzer. Um, <laughs> and actually, a delicious Viva. Oh, my. No. I yeah, haven't really drank nice. many, but this was a very good this one. This is not a plug, I swear. I genuinely, they gave us like a, a bunch of these, mm-hmm. and I've been having one before my podcast shoots, and I've been so fucking good on the microphone. Lately. Yeah. <laughs> it's because of Viva Tequila Seltzer. It is nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Loose. We had a beer before we got here. We were like, mm-hmm. we definitely got to do yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, can I ask what your guys' goals are for 2024, Amber and Brendan? That. Whoever wants to go first. <laughs> I'm flipping his sorry, yeah, sorry to go stepbrothers <laughs> no, flipping on you guys. <laughs> Amber, do you know? I well, can go if you want. I don't, okay. I'm trying to think of my actual goal because I, I feel like this is going to be a big year for me because I'm graduating my master's. Ooh, wow, and, congratulations. Um, That's thank awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm already a therapist, like working full time, but I'm like oh, really yeah. excited to be like a real therapist i guess you're so, a real therapist um now. yeah i'm a real therapist i am <laughs> i mean i have to be um but yeah so i'm really excited for that and i think i'm just it's my second career i used to be a teacher and i'm just like really excited that i'm living out my passion and something i really care about and it wasn't like easy to make the switch and i'm really glad i did it to like honor myself and my uh what makes me feel fulfilled so i'm wow. i'm great. excited to like reap the the good feelings yeah that. that's awesome yeah. cheers to you thank you oh yeah that was lovely. Now I feel bad, like I'm taking away from you by sharing mine. <laughs> oh. um, mine last year, I feel like I've, b- I've been doing very well as of late. And it's living life less intensely because mm. I do shit all the time. I literally am always doing something and I travel a lot. And that was also part of my goal. And this year, I'm just trying to like be a normal person. And like lately, I've been working my nine to five, going to the gym. And then afterwards, I'll come home and I'll do like music. You're missing things. And it's nice to like have that routine and mm. not like... Peter, that's why I didn't go to the underground yesterday. I'm working mm-hmm. on myself, okay? I keep <laughs> drinking till he's 2 a.m. I forgot he's back there. <laughs> um, doing a ton of yoga. Oh, on. I did. Confirm. I do yoga as well. Yeah, man. Hot. I do a hot flow uh, on Wednesday yeah. nights. Yeah. Um, in South Boston, Crystal Lynn is my instructor. <laughs> Shout out to Crystal Lynn. <laughs> she probably never hear this, but wow. She I'm really, direct. She spiritually connects with me. Great. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Amber and I actually do it together. Yeah. A fun fact is that Brendan and I are on the couples membership at the gym. <laughs> we're, we're, not, oh. we're not actually a Don't couple, give that up. Yeah. Hey, you gotta, <laughs> yeah, you got to scan the system. Like sometimes somehow. I'm like, should I wear my fake ring today? <laughs> Where do you guys practice? Uh, lifetime. lifetime. But mm. also shout out Breathe Cambridge because that was my, that was mm. my uh, studio right. for a long time. Yeah. Miss it there. What kind of flow do you guys do? Hot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the winter time is so great to do hot because you get in there – like you're sweating. Then you walk outside when it's cold and you just feel like a new person. Oh, like, yeah. Oh, that Dude. cold air touches you and you're like, wow, like, who am I right yeah. now? Yeah. Biggest hack. <laughs> biggest hack. You can be my guest if you ever want to come. Mondays at 545, you do like a heated flow. Mm-hmm. It's like really, it's like a core workout mm-hmm. and you're so sweaty. And then you go out to your car and you smoke a little joint. Mm-hmm. And then you go in for an hour meditation. Oh. And then you go to the jacuzzi. And then you go in the jacuzzi. <laughs> And then you go do the lap lanes with your friends and mm-hmm. you just walk them, walk down. You don't actually swim. And then yeah, we just walk and gossip. Complete. Yeah, that's <laughs> wait. I've you never guys done this, and that sounds very. <laughs> <laughs> <cute>. <laughs> you know, like the lap lane thing. You guys walk down the and lane like and then walk back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys, <laughs> you guys just basically pace the pool floor. Yeah, yeah I'm definitely not putting effort in my strokes. I'm, I'm yeah. tiptoeing. Yeah. Tip-toeing. Okay. All right. Wow, another, that's pretty cool. I'll say another thing about hot yoga. Um, I used to get seasonal depression in the summer because it's just too hot. But <laughs> now that I've been doing oh. hot yoga, I can tolerate the heat and I wow. actually enjoy it. All right. So. Shout out to hot yoga. Yeah. The, uh, That's yeah. a hack. The old SD. That is that, <laughs> that is a unique the SD old. too. Yeah. Everyone gets it now. Everyone's yeah. like, I hate the cold. No, it's I dark. Like the cold. I feel like yeah, I'm fighting now. <laughs> I've avoided seasonal depression because when I go to the gym, usually it's like dawnish. Is that mm-hmm. the night one? Dawn? Dusk. Dusk. I was like, really? Awesome. Yeah, good for you. You're out, Dawn. Nice. It's duskish. But then when I come out, it's nighttime. But by the time I come out, it would have been nighttime even if it's in the summer. Does that make sense? So like I don't yeah, experience I an early nighttime because oh, it would have wow. been nighttime no matter what. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyways, yeah. So that's my goal. <laughs> my goal is actually to focus a lot more on music you're missing because we've been popping off as of late. So I'm trying Excellent. to hey, um, congrats, get that back. Dude, that's awesome. <laughs> you guys have been popping off. Yeah. I mean, this place is really cool. Yeah, this, this is, is definitely helped. This is so cool. This yeah. has certainly helped. Yeah. Um, anywho, um, <laughs> Spruce. <laughs> It's been lovely chatting with you guys. I'm so sorry that it took like one whole year for you guys to come in studio, but I'm glad because now you're in the new studio and yeah. you saw all these people. It worked out. And worked thank out. you for having us. It's been an absolute pleasure. We really yeah, appreciate thanks it. for having me. You know, <laughs> it was we'll fun see. to be on with you guys. Thanks we'll for being here, yeah, Amber. <laughs> yes. We'll see you on the, the Spruce is Loose. The Spruce yeah, is Loose. Cheers.